Welcome to the Rise Method podcast, where we make fitness information available to everyone. I'm Steve. Let's jump in. Hey, folks, just quickly, we've started making these shorter podcast episodes that you can listen to them while you're on a break from work, maybe going for a short walk or doing some meal prep. Enjoy. Now, over the last decade of working in the fitness and health space, I've had a lot of folks ask me questions about calories. Things like, are my calories right? Are my calories too high? Are you sure these calories are for weight loss? What is a calorie? So I thought I'd take a moment just to explain what calories are and how to overcome the most common mindsets around calories. And mindsets is an important one. And that's mainly two ideas. The first idea is what even is a calorie? And the second idea is trying to detach emotion from the calorie. Okay, we're going to talk about the two of those things. So firstly, what the hell is a calorie? Now, in simple ways, a calorie is just a unit of energy, much like how we would weigh something and we can say it is X number of grams or kilos, or we might uh, test the speed of something and it's like going this kilometers an hour or this miles an hour, yeah? So we use calories as a way to measure energy inside food. And more specifically, we are trying to measure the amount of energy it takes to change the temperature of the food by one degree going up. So foods that are more dense, have lots more energy in them, as we put them inside this little device called a calorimeter, we see that, hey, it takes more units of energy to raise the temperature in this, so it's more dense, more energy involved inside that object. So when we are consuming something, essentially what we're doing is we're breaking down that food and we're absorbing the energy or we're using that energy in the form of you know, macronutrients and other complex chemical stuff. That's for another day. But you know, we're just using energy. Think of it like maybe your fuel tank. We're just absorbing energy. We're using that fuel and then we can use that in our body. Now, calories are much like temperature where um, you, you know, temperature is a, as a, is a thing, but you can't put temperature under a microscope and measure it, right? Um, you know, we can predict things like you know, maybe the vibration of it and stuff to measure the temperature, but you can't, you know, visibly see it. You know, something like a protein, we can see a protein under a microscope. We can see we can see a carbohydrate under a microscope, but a calorie we can't see under a microscope. It's a measurement. So that's where some folks would say, you know, calories don't matter, matter, it's not even a thing. Well, yeah, true. It's, it's technically not like a, a tangible thing. You can't hold a calorie, but it's a form of energy. Now, the problem lies is when we're trying to prescribe calories to see a change in the body. So if you've been following this podcast for a while, you've probably clued on for folks who may be finding this for the first time. When we are consuming calories, our body uses those calories. If we have too many calories, too many, too much energy in our body, our body wants to store that. So yeah, okay, we expend some of it, some of it comes out on the other end, but we, we store some of that for a, a later date. That's purely a survival mechanism, right? You know, imagine like you are a caveman and um, you know, you, you, it's, it's, it's a bit of a famine right now and you just hunted a, a boar or you found a, a fruit tree and you just guzzle up and you, you feast on the, the boar or the fruit tree or whatever you found and you can eat. So your body isn't just going to use the energy that it needs for that moment. It's going to try to store some for the later date so we can survive, right? Now, if we consume less calories or energy than we require, we're going to start metabolizing or breaking down tissues in our body to act as fuel. And those tissues are things like fat cells, which we all hope that we're getting rid of when we are in an energy deficit. And we also break down muscle tissue. We break down that muscle tissue and you use that. And then other things start to um, either break down or are not produced in the same way. So let's say like hair and skin and stuff like that. Again, another podcast. So when we're trying to prescribe calories to make an effective change, for example, we're trying to lose weight. What we're doing is we're trying to predict how many calories we require right now and then predict how to make this energy deficit that is going to strategically cause a change in our body and then try to stick with that over time. And there are problems in that, mainly around the emotional side of things. So I want you to think of calories much like money, okay? Much like dollars, okay? We all know Australian dollars, 
wherever you're listening to this, you know, you've got your own currency and we all have an uh, appreciation of the worth of a dollar. You know, I could go to, um, you know, a restaurant and expect a meal to be between, you know, 20 and $30, right? I can go to a petrol station and expect, uh, you know, petrol to be currently, I don't know, like two bucks, right? So I have a rough expectation of what the dollar is worth and valued, right? But problems arise in that where we're talking about dollars, if you go to a restaurant, $20 to $30 a meal. But if you went overseas, let's say you went to Bali or you went to India, or you went somewhere in South America and you are going to buy a meal and it's 100,000 rupiah for a meal or you know, 50,000 lira or whatever you're trying to do. Um, so the money can be different from where you go. And sometimes those numbers just don't make sense in our head. So if you're looking at your calorie prescription and you're like, ah, shit, 2,000 calories, that must be bad. But you may not have an understanding of what a calorie actually is. And I have witnessed people consume, you know, 1,000, 1,500 calories more in one sitting in one meal. So those numbers might seem high, uh, but that's kind of our like emotional brain attached to that number, but we might not actually have a tangible understanding of that calorie. So think of it like money a little bit. Also like money, you know, we are dealing with inflation. So what you may have been able to buy in the 2000s, the 90s, 80s, 70s, depending how old you are, you might have those stories. Oh, I used to go to the milk bar and buy a whole bag of sweets for 10 cents. You, you can't do that now. So, you know, the value of money changes over time. So the calories that you might have needed at a different time is different to what you may need now. So it's a prediction, right? It changes. Finally, the situation that you're in di- dictates things like your expenses and like your budget. So like myself, for example, when I was a uni student, I was living in a share house, eh, I had next to no expenses. Once upon a time, I used to work on a cruise ship where I, I genuinely couldn't spend money. My board was all included in my, my pay. I didn't have to pay for a room. I didn't have to pay for bills. I didn't have to pay for food. All I did was rocked up and got paid. So my expenses were nothing. But now, you know, I have a family, I have a mortgage, I have pets, I have responsibilities. So now my budget is different. So my, if we just translate that word budget to, let's say, calorie prescription, my situation might be different now to what it was last year, five years ago, 10 years ago. And that might be same with you. So maybe six months ago, you were working a really active job and you required more calories. Or maybe three years ago, when COVID came along and we were now all in our house and we weren't as active, we might have required fewer calories. So those calorie numbers can change depending on our situation. So I want you to think of your calorie prescription much like a budget that you may use in your household if you were trying to work towards a goal, like trying to save money to go on a holiday or buy a bigger home or whatever you decide to do with your money. Okay, so let's talk about how we may strategically calculate our calorie prescription so that we can apply some logic to calories rather than being lots of grounded in in emotions around calories. Because essentially calorie is just a number and it is actually a very... uh, falsifying number. So we have to kind of squint our eyes and turn our heads to make it work for us. So firstly, the calorie prediction that we use has its own flaws. There's a few ways to measure and predict our calories. So we can use a tool uh, or a formula, much like a TDEE formula, a total daily energy expenditure formula. And that could be like the Harris-Benedict formula, the George St. Mifflin formula, and you could just Google these and literally the first one, they all have their slight variances and they might benefit slightly different populations. But the easiest way to measure your kind of maintenance calories or your body weight would stay the same is to multiply your body weight in kilos by 30. Yeah, so, I, so let's say me, I'm about 100 kilos, just multiply that by 30, 3,000, bang, that's a good starting point for maintenance calories. Yeah, okay, I probably need about 3,000 calories a day. And I'm sure if I use one formula, it might say 1,800, another formula might say 3,100, ah, you know, it's, it's much of muchness. Now, if I was trying to lose weight, the easiest calculation is to multiply my body weight in kilos by 20 to 25, somewhere in that range. So for me, you know, 2,000, 2,500 calories is a rough range I would use for a deficit. And that works out to be, you know, about 500 calories in a deficit for me, uh, or about, you know, 10 to 15%, because if your 
calorie prediction is 1500 calories, 500 calories is a third of your calorie intake. That's quite large. The percentage might work better in those cases. So that could be a very quick way just to start the calorie process because it's much like a budget. You might have the best intentions on paper. Hey, this is how many dollars we need to survive week to week and this is how many dollars we can save. Great, Let's. this is our strategy. But once you actually start imply, uh, applying it, you might need to tweak it along the way to make it sustainable. So you've implemented the strategy, now you're making it sustainable. So you might go, oh shit, petrol prices just went up or insurance is now due or kids are sick, got to take them to the doctor. So these expenses come up, so we've got to kind of modify it as, as we go. So much like our calorie prescription, the starting point isn't the end point. It's literally just a starting point. So that number, you know, you could use a prediction or just choose your favorite number, 3,000 calories, 2,500 calories. It doesn't need to be the same calories as you had last time because your body's probably different to what you were doing last time you were dieting or last time you were bulking. So there's your starting point. We estimate a rough deficit, let's say for me, 2,500 calories. And that again is just a prediction. So that's one side of the conversation is predicting the number. The next side of the conversation is the limitations in actually measuring our intake. Because the fact of the matter is, a lot of us suck at tracking our food intake. We often under-report our food intake and over-report our energy expenditure. And that's that's replicated in multiple studies. Even folks like dietitians get it wrong consistently. So we can understand and, and just appreciate that there's a high chance that we there is only some error rate in the way that we report. Next, when we actually report the foods, the data might not be completely correct. So the data might be the database that you're looking at. When you're trying to measure a banana, you measure it against the database. The banana, depending on how big it is, how ripe it is, um, you know, how it's been tra- uh, transported, how you're choosing to consume it, they will change the way that the calories are inside that banana, especially how it's grown, <clears throat> and then how you actually absorb it. So depending on how hungry you are, the state that you're in, that can all change the way that we actually absorb the calories inside that banana. So if you're sitting there measuring, oh, geez, I ate 100 grams of banana, is that 150 calories or 120 calories? Just just, just choose one and be consistent with, with that. That's one side of it. Next is labels. Labels can be wrong by up to 20% in Australia. So if it says that it is 100 calories in a certain food item on the label, that could be anywhere between 80 to 120 calories in that um, food. And that's just simply down to machine standards. You know, when if you just picture yourself inside a, I don't know, muesli bar factory and they're making muesli bars, you know, there might be slight variances in those those ingredients and each bar. Okay, so there's no true number. Now, without you leaving this podcast going, oh, she's Steve, like, fuck that. Like, what am I meant to do? <clears throat> so the best way to approach it is we're going to try our best to be consistent with the amount of calories that we think we're consuming. The best way to do it is just to repeat the meals. So if you have the same types of meals repeatedly, you know, maybe you choose five or 10 meals and you just repeat those, there's a, there is a lower um, error rate if we repeat the same meals over the, over the period of time. Because even if you're incorrect in the foods, let's say spaghetti bolognese, you think there is 500 calories in a serve, but really you're having 550 calories in that serve of spaghetti bolognese you are consistently having 550 when you think you're having 500. Then you may think that you're having 2,000 calories a day or 2,500 calories a day or whatever it is, but really you're having a different number. But that that, that number doesn't matter. Heck, even 2,500 doesn't matter. Just call it X. That's okay. You're being consistent. You're consistently having X, whatever that is, consistently having X. Then what we need to do is measure our body weight changes. So if I'm consistently having X amount of calories, I'm thinking it's 2,000 calories, it's really, I don't know, 2,200 calories, I'm consistently having X. I know I'm consistently having X because I'm having the same, let's say, three days worth of meals over and over again. You know, there's nine meals with a few snacks repeated over and over again, and I get really good at making those meals, I know the portion sizes, I know what it looks like in my container, and I'm really quick at making them great. It makes it really easy for me. If I'm losing weight, great, happy days. Regardless of whatever calories I'm doing, I'm losing weight, awesome. We can measure the rate of weight loss and we want that to be about 0.5 to 1% of our body weight per week. So me, about 100 kilos. If I'm losing weight at a rate of uh, a kilo to a gram per week, awesome. That's a nice sweet spot we're aiming for, which is about that 10 to 15% deficit or around 500 calories, 
for most folks. Awesome, ticking all the boxes. Who cares what the number is on the calorie because I'm just eating X and I'm the way I go. Now, if I'm not losing weight at that rate, all I need to do is take X minus, let's say, a few more percentage points. So a round number, 100 calories is a great place to start. So if I think I'm having 2,000 calories, because I'm measuring it out, but really I'm consuming 2,200 calories on average a day, I'm calling that X. I then, in my best attempt, try to reduce my calorie intake by about 100 calories. You could measure it out 100 calories, or you could just lower your portion slices, sizes slightly. So instead of having 100 grams of rice, you have 90 grams of rice. Instead of having 100 grams of chicken, you have 90 grams of chicken. So you're just slightly reducing the portion sizes and then test the effects on your body. And that slight reduction might continue to lose weight. And then you're in that range of 0.5 to 1% per week. So that is a logical way to manipulate our food intake, our energy, or the calories is how we measure it, without applying too much emotion to it. Oh, geez, you know, that's a big number. That's a scary number. I think they're too high. Because often when we start saying things like, I think they're too high, we're just basing that off emotion. We're not basing it off any logical reasoning. The best way is to measure things. Try your best to measure your food intake so you get a good prediction of what you're having. The best way to predict your energy intake is just to have standardized meals. Each meal is similar and repeat them over time. And then we're trying to maintain our daily activities. So we're training, you know, three, four, five times a week. We're maintaining, let's say, 10,000 steps a day. So we're trying our best to keep all the variables the same so that we can logically, strategically, and actually achieve our goal of weight loss via manipulation of calories. So I hope you found this podcast helpful. I hope that you learned what a calorie was. And I hope that you learned how to rationalize and logistically logistically, logically, <laughs> manipulate your calories to get the results that you want in your body. I'll catch you in the next one.